Greetings. We thought it would be valuable for you to hear the stories of some staff who've already taken sabbaticals. Although a sabbatical journey is unique to the individual, there are often some takeaways uh, that can be gleaned from those who have already walked the pathway. So I hope that uh, you get some gleanings or some words, some points of wisdom from these testimonies of individuals who have taken sabbaticals. The, the first obstacle, or a, I don't know, objection would be it, was uh, the people in my own church, and specifically in their understanding. It was the first, I was the first pastor who uh, pursued uh, and talked about sabbatical. So there was a bit of an obstacle just in terms of dialoguing with them and coming to an understanding with the leadership in the church as a whole. But the second obstacle, uh, maybe more notable, was even myself, as uh, I don't know if I had a, a great understanding of what sabbatical uh, was or could be or, or should be. So that was an interesting process just for me to, uh, to learn and, and to pursue an understanding because uh, as, I, as I considered it and anticipated it, uh, the world doesn't uh, communicate or value rest well. And uh, uh, as much as uh, I'd like to say, I'm uh, not of this world. I live in it. And the idea of taking time to, to rest in a sabbatical way was uh, a process I had, to, I had to work through. One of them was just, um, you know, moving my, my assignments to, over to uh, our associate pastor. Not that uh, he isn't capable at all, but just knowing the extra work for him. And also we are just finishing our capital campaign portion of a building project that we're on and um, and we were just moving into the building part of it the campaign was completed and I almost felt like I was stepping out but um, the nice thing uh, about being part of a, of a church that has uh, multiple staff or has uh, multiple leaders that can step into your place you don't uh, you're not as missed as you think you might be um, not that they don't miss you in your personhood, but in terms of the assignment, um, God raises up other capable people to, uh, to step into the gap while you get some rest. Well, I think initially one of the things that for us was something to try and figure out is we had three children. And so it was determining how we could take sabbatical in a way that would give the greatest impact for us as a family. We knew that this was a really rich opportunity. So it was a lot of juggling because we had uh, one in high school, one in junior high, and one in elementary school. And so some of that was that juggling of our kids and making sure. So we, that's why we chose when we took our sabbatical was to make the most of the summer vacation as well for our kids. So that was a big obstacle to try and determine all of those details. I think sabbatical is really built into the culture of our church. And so we really invested quite a bit of time a year in advance already in determining uh, who would uh, work in our position while we were gone. So we had been grooming one of our guys for quite some time, and so we felt very comfortable about that. But it did take quite a bit of advanced thinking about that. And then another obstacle uh, was about a month before we were supposed to leave on sabbatical, my husband had to ta have emergency spleen surgery. And so, and then he had complications after that. And so that impacted everything. And so McKernan was really great because they said, we don't want you to start your sabbatical sick. So they actually pushed our sabbatical ahead a couple of weeks so that when we were on sabbatical, my husband was well. And uh, so that was, I think those were some of the significant obstacles that we encountered. One of the things that we initially were wondering how it would be was um, my husband and I work together, so we do really enjoy working together. We are very differently gifted, and so that makes a good team. We were honestly wondering how it would be to spend that much time together uh, and just being together. Uh, and it actually went really well. <laughs> we learned, I think, how to develop a sense of rhythm and flexibility. And so we learned that there needed to be rhythm and we needed time by ourselves and we needed time um, away from each other. And I think that that was a good thing. I think initially, though, that was a really good fear for us. Uh, another would be, how will I do when I'm not working? When you devote yourself to ministry, when you're called to ministry, and you wonder what it will be like when you're not doing ministry, how will that be for you? 
because all of us are defined uh, on some level by what we do. The, the church was in safe hands, great uh, uh, leaders in these things. But still, um, I, not that I'm not replaceable, but still, yeah, logistically, there was, there was months of planning. You know, uh, from the Sunday morning perspective, who's going to preach in these things and who's going to oversee what I oversee. But, uh, you know, I, I think it took about a week for the church to realize I, uh, for them to cover my bases. And I realized I'm, I'm uh, much more replaceable than I ever had hoped for. But, uh, you know, when it was time to come back, the, the need was there and my role was there and there was work to be done. But it did take a lot of planning and preparing to be away. And I didn't want to fall short. You know, I didn't want to come to the church and say afterwards that it was a waste of time or anything. So there was this desire that uh, I would sabbatical well, and maybe that's an achievement type thing. But uh, he did want it to be, I did want it to be what it, what it could and, and was supposed to be. God really spoke to me um, through the midst of the sabbatical. Um, and he really gave me a scripture uh, out of Psalm 18, <clears throat> where David is uh, sharing about how he's on the run from his enemies. His enemies are proving too, too powerful for him. Um, he's feeling like he's being, uh, you know, submerged in, in the waters of, uh, of life. And God reaches down and draws him out of those waters. And he takes him to the spacious place. And and that spacious place was a place where he didn't have to look over his shoulder for his enemy. Um, he could relax in the presence of God. And so for me, that sabbatical um, three years ago was, was a spacious place. I didn't feel like I had to um, look over my shoulder um, to, or look ahead to meet all the pending demands. But it was just a pleasant place of grace and a, a sacred place. And um, I just really found God in the midst of, of that sacred place. Uh, I was surprised by how tired we were. I think you work, uh, we actually didn't take our sabbatical till our eighth year of ministry. Uh, in our church, not only the rhythm is uh, at seven years, you can take your sabbatical. So ours was already in our eighth. And we were very tired. And so I think I probably knew that that would happen. Uh, I think I didn't realize to the depth that it would. So we spent a lot of time initially in rest and sleeping in if we wanted to. I mean, we had three kids, so we, they had to get to school. So that still happened. But uh, if you needed a nap, you took a nap. And I think uh, making space for that was really important, the, that rest element and what that would look like. Another surprise would have been, um, I think we were ready for the break. But as time went on, you miss your church community. Um, there was a lot of people that said, oh, but you'll come to church on Sunday, right? And we said, no, actually, we won't be coming to church. We need the time away. And that was important. I'm really glad that we did that. But when you're just a visitor at another church um, and you're not intending on being part of a community, it gets lonely after a while. And you realize, uh, again, how significant the people in your church are to you. Um, and that's a good realization. It was good for us to miss them so that when we were back, uh, hopefully they missed us, which I think they did, but we really missed them too. So we were glad to be reunited again. So I think those were two surprises. I think I was surprised by the fact that God would teach me as much as he did. Um, I had you know, invested time where I planned in that I would be learning, but there was so much more that he did on a soul uh, level um, in us. Um, I didn't expect to be quite as um, shaken in a good way than as I was in sabbatical. That's an interesting question as I, as I thought about it. I don't think anything surprised me. I don't think, thinking back, but... Um... You know, other than how much I enjoyed it, uh, I know some anticipated, you know, what am I going to do, uh, you know, without having to get up and go to work. But uh, I really enjoyed not having that pressure of I got to get to work, I got to get to the office, I got to go to the meeting, I got to go to whatever. I was truly able to get up and spend time with the family, take the kids to, to school, go to the gym and just have this, this peace and this restfulness in the day. Prepare to be um, shaken a little bit by God. 
he probably has something that he wants to teach you. For me, even on an extended vacation time, you don't take that much time to be introspective about your life. And sabbatical provided that opportunity for me. And so um, Sam always tells us that you should prepare for God to do something new. He's going to birth something new in you. And I wouldn't say it was really drastic. I didn't have a lightning moment, but I really had a deeper sense uh, of what God was wanting to do in me. And um, yeah, that he was going to continue that calling he placed in my life, even if some of it was going to start to change. Now, I, I think I like to enjoy life as much as the next person, but uh, my sabbatical, it seemed to really uh, point out to me that I wasn't enjoying life as much as I could be or should be each day. Uh, it just seemed that recreation was a bit too foreign. Um, uh, rest was foreign in terms of, a, you know, incorporating the regular rhythm of life. So my sabbatical, you know, what I took from that was, Dwayne, my identity is not simply pastor at the church. You know, I'm much more than that. Should be much more than that. So uh, it's just enjoying life in all avenues from day to day and week to week and, and incorporating and including rest and recreation, you know, recreating myself, if you will. And uh, uh, I've, I've told my own church this, that uh, becoming the senior pastor a number of years ago, eight years ago, I felt like in the years since I've changed and in some ways good and in some ways I felt like I've, I've lost some of who I used to used to be because of the pressures that I, I, I feel like I, I bear. And so just identifying that, uh, one, maybe I'm holding too many pressures just on my own shoulder, but uh, two, to maybe become again who I once was and smile a little bit more often. <laughs> Determine who you are in the sense of what feeds you. Um, it's a really significant time to fill those deep wells in you spiritually. So determine what does that, um, and then put that into your time. But prepare for the sabbatical uh, would be the best ad advice I have for them. Um, uh, the sabbatical workshop, when I went to that, it was eye-opening to me because I've heard I'd heard stories of other people on sabbatical, but to me they were just stories of what they I don't know they did rather than uh, what they had thought about doing and and. Uh, uh, picturing out what their months of sabbatical would be. And so uh, really think it through, prepare uh, in terms of uh, who are you and then what do you need and what fits you best. Because even I reflect back onto other people's sabbatical stories and I was drawn to it. You know, they, they went to Israel, they went on a, on a bike trip or they did these things, but that was them and not me. And so even my sabbatical had to match me and my family and, and my capacities. So... Uh, it's good to talk to others and find out what they did, but really know who you are and think it through and what you need and then to prepare for it. And so on day one, uh, uh, of course, you're incorporating rest, but you can anticipate. And thus, you know, my fear of wasting it, uh, I don't think I did because I, I planned it. I anticipated doing nothing or, or doing this or creating the space for these various things I was able to do. Uh, I think the importance of planning is a huge one. Um, it is worth every bit of planning that you need to put into it. It absolutely is. But don't think that you can just go without planning. You need the planning element. Um, it's hard to imagine when you're maybe thinking about taking a sabbatical and how will I put all these pieces together. It will take a lot to do. But it's absolutely worth it. And I feel like because we were well prepared, because Pastor Sam spent so much time with us kind of talking through what were the expectations, what were the outcomes we were hoping for, we were really kind of well versed in what it would look like. Um, so we had good rhythm and flexibility in all that we did. Um, so I think that would be another element too, is planning rhythm and flexibility. So there should be rhythm to your days in that you kind of have an idea of how you would like your days to look but not so much structure that you feel like you're accomplishing a to-do list. That was a huge one. Is sabbatical wasn't a checklist that I had to check off. I didn't plan it so structured that I had lots I had to do, but I needed some elements that were predictable every day for me to feel like it was achieving what God wanted to achieve in it. Um, 
and that was very worth it. Yeah, first of all, make sure that um, that your leadership board or your elder board is uh, on is uh, supporting you in that decision, and I think that you need um, to communicate that to your church too. And I think your board needs to step forward and communicate that for you on your behalf, and not that this is um, something that you're you're crashing or that actually it's the opposite. It's preventative. Um, it's it's proactive. And that you that the church is gifting their um, blessing their their pastor with the sabbatical so that they can continue to serve that church congregation with longevity. Uh, also, just your workload management as you're doing your annual ministry plans. Make sure that you're out far enough so that you backfill that position, whatever that looks for looks like for you. If you're a solo pastor at a at a, a smaller church, or if you have multiple staff. Make sure that uh, you can do all you can to make sure that the, your sabbatical isn't burdensome on everybody else and they'll think that's the last time we ever do that. You want it to be a positive experience for them. So good planning and preparation and just open uh, conversation is important. And, and, and I think as you, you look at the positive of, of a sabbatical, the, the impact for the church is gonna, it's gonna be a positive too, that you'll come back renewed and refreshed hopefully in the Lord and, and just with a, with a uh, re-envisioning what the Lord has for you for the future. Honestly, I feared that I was going to waste the time. And I probably didn't use it to its fullness, um, but it was a valuable time to me. And, and maybe it's like uh, other things where you learn to become uh, better at it. I think I'll sabbatical even better the next time if I get that opportunity than my first Time is precious to me. God's given it to me. And so I, I want that Kairos time, you know, present in the moment and taking advantage of my opportunities. I didn't want to waste my sabbatical. I didn't want to look back and go, ah, I wish I would have done that differently. I wanted to make the most of it. And so making the most of it made it so valuable to us. We, it was such a rich time. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I can hardly wait till our next one.